Howdy howdy, my name is John, and this video is a review of the series, The Black Company by Glenn Cook. One thing to note here is this review does not cover the book Port of Shadows. My understanding is that this book was written much later, and the action takes place between the first book and the second book. If I ever do a reread of The Black Company, which I do hope to do at some point, I'll probably read Port of Shadows. Uh, in chronological order of when the action takes place. I have heard mixed things about that book, which is why I'm not eager to read it right now. I also want to note that I have done individual reviews of the first eight books in this series. I'm not going to do a dedicated review for the ninth and tenth book. I'll expand my thoughts on those books a little bit at the end of the video. So if you want to skip to those books, I'll have a timestamp in the description. First, I want to discuss some kind of general things about the series. I did enjoy reading this series. I gave one of the books five stars. I gave five of the books four stars. I gave four of the books three stars. And a lot of the books seem to kind of straddle the line between three and four stars for me. Glenn Cook does not have the most accessible writing style. I've noted in the past that I'm not really a big fan of when a book has a short uh, section uh, followed by multiple other shorter sections. It kind of takes me out of the rhythm of reading. It only has seven chapters, but each chapter is subdivided basically into short uh, thoughts or short episodes. It does make for a convenient place to stop reading if you need to. What the second book does, and the books uh, past that, is everywhere where the first book would have just had like a uh, break, it actually makes that a new chapter. Some of the chapters in the later books are really short, only being a couple of sentences long. Another thing to note is these are military fantasy. This follows a mercenary company. If you're not fond of reading military fiction or military history, this might not be the series for you. Another thing to note is these are dark fantasies. The characters in this book do some pretty despicable things. Their attitude is more, is this effective, rather than, is this the moral or the right thing to do? Now I'm going to go through the series one book at a time and kind of give some brief thoughts about each book. Now I read this series out of uh, the Omnibus edition, so uh, these 10 books are combined into four bound books. This first book contains the first three books. The first book is The Black Company. This introduces the reader to The Black Company and really, I did struggle to read this book. This book was really only about a three-star book for me until I got to the last two chapters. Now, if you remember, I said this only has seven. And the seventh chapter is by far the shortest chapter. In fact, that seventh chapter is about the length of a normal chapter. But the action really picks up in the sixth chapter. And it really gets exciting. And it really concludes well. I gave The Black Company four stars, and it's my fifth favorite of the series. The next book in the series is Shadows Linger. Now, I really liked one of the main characters of this book, and this book was, for me, a whole lot easier to read. In fact, if you struggle with book one, but, you know, kind of like me, like the ending, um, I do advise going ahead and reading book two. Now, if you don't like book two, you can probably safely stop reading the series. I also gave book two four stars. It's my fourth favorite of the series, which, given how much of an improvement book two is over book one, actually surprised me a little bit. But the top three of this series are really strong reads. Book three is The White Rose. This one kind of fell flat for me. The story kind of is more of a standard fantasy uh, type story. You've got the Black Company being more good guys than they were in the previous two. 
And it has a trope that I don't really like where the enemy of my enemy is now my friend because there's an even worse enemy. I will say there are some really imaginative creatures in this book. Uh, Cook did a really good job kind of creating the world. And, you know, I just wish it would have been in a better story. As such, I gave this novel three stars, and it's my eighth favorite of the series. This volume, The Books of the South, contains the next three stories. Now, the last story in this edition is actually what I would suggest reading fourth. That's The Silver Spike. Basically, at the end of book three, the Black Company separates into two groups. The Silver Spike covers one of those groups, and then that story ends for that group of people. Then books 5 through 10 cover the other part of that group, and it's all basically one continuous story. So you don't really want to take time away from books 5 through 10 in order to read The Silver Spike. I really enjoyed The Silver Spike. Again, we have some interesting uh, main characters, and you have a very complex story with multiple points of view that all kind of weave together and a lot of really good action scenes in this novel. I gave this book four stars, and it's my second favorite of the series. And I think, I don't, it's been a while since I've read this now, but I think the reason I did not give this five instead of four is because of the writing style. Cook's writing style does take some getting used to, but still, it's a very enjoyable story. Now, I have seen some reviews of The Silver Spike, and it's not other people's favorites because it's not kind of following, quote, the main group. But for me, I really enjoyed The Silver Spike. Book five is Shadow Games. This actually turned out to be my next to least favorite book in the series. We follow the group as they travel south, and a lot of it is just the journey. Now, there are some good action scenes. There's one in the middle, and then there's one at the end, and that really heightened my enjoyment of this book. But overall, the book's a bit of a drag. The sixth book is Dreams of Steel. This is, uh, again, one of my favorites of the, book, of the series. This is the third, my third favorite of the series, and I ranked it just below The Silver Spike. Again, you've got multiple storylines with multiple points of view, and they all weave together, and you really get to see people act and other people react. And then, of course, you know, the situation changes where the, the second group will act and the first group will react. And it's really a great uh, storytelling in this. Again, not the most accessible writing style. I did enjoy this slightly less than I enjoyed The Silver Spot. I did give it four stars. It's my third favorite of the series. This book, The Return of the Black Company, holds books 7 and 8 of the series. This also starts the Glittering Stone arc. Number 7 is Bleak Seasons. And part of this book actually tells the story of book 6 from a different point of view. We don't really get that point of view in, in book 6. It is here in book 7. And that's another reason why I suggest reading The Silver Spike 4. You don't really want too much time to elapse between reading Dreams of Steel and Shadow Games. I did enjoy reading this book, but overall, it's not the best of the series. I wound up only giving it three stars, and it's my seventh favorite of the series. The next book, book number eight, is She is the Darkness. This book actually wound up being my least favorite of the series. I really struggled to get into this story. Now, I had some other things going on in my life at the time, and that may have been why I had so much trouble reading this book. But as such, it's a three-star read for me, and it's my least favorite of the series. This is the last omnibus of the series, The Many Deaths of the Black Company, and it contains the ninth and tenth books of the series. Water Sleeps is book number nine, and I really did enjoy reading this book. It's got a good story, 
and I gave it four stars. However, it's my least favorite of the books that I rated four stars. The last book of the series is Soldiers Live. This actually turned out to be my favorite in the series. Now, I can't really go into the full explanation of why this is my favorite in the series because that would be getting into spoilers. Um, but it does do one of the things that I really like uh, in the, my favorite books is, again, it has multiple storylines from multiple points of view. And I really enjoyed uh, the story that uh, Cook tells in this book. It makes a wonderful conclusion to the series. And really, it kind of makes uh, reading the entire series worthwhile for me. So in conclusion, I really did enjoy reading this series. I, I found it a worthwhile uh, addition to the books that I've read. I personally like military fantasy. Um, I've read others in this genre now, and it seems to be something that uh, I've really enjoyed reading. I'm certainly looking forward to what other people have to say as they start and finish the series. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.